Welcome back to more Mario Power Tennis. Last time we got through most of the special games, so this time we're going over the final minigame along with the exhibition mode. First up is Coin Collectors. This one takes place on the court we haven't seen yet, the Mario Classic Court. To tell the truth, I'm not the biggest fan of this court or minigame because it's actually kind of overwhelming. There's a lot to keep track of here, and it's very easy to lose track of your character because of all the coins and other items flying around. You have a power block over the net that'll change the player's position, moving you closer to the front of the net, and in general, it's better to be closer to the front to get the coins more effectively. But there's also the risk of being more susceptible to fireballs that come out of the pipes as well. The gold coins are worth 10, and the red coins are worth 50. The goal for this first rank is to collect 1,000 points within a minute, which isn't too bad, but we are kind of cutting it close actually, as we have about 10 seconds left, and we still need about 50 points. So let's see if we can pull this off. We actually barely got enough points, and luckily we didn't even get hit by any of the fireballs. So in general, that actually went pretty well. I love the aesthetics of this court, but again, I find it a bit overwhelming, and it's kind of a case of sensory overload because of how much is happening. The goals for the other ranks are to collect 4,000 points within 2 minutes and 10,000 points within 3 minutes. In the Wii version, the goals are to collect 500 points in a minute, 2,500 points in 2 minutes, and 7,000 points in 3 minutes. There's also an endless version where you have to collect as many as possible without getting hit by a fireball. So that was a quick look at all of the special games within this mode. As you can tell by the demo reels, some of these can even be played in multiplayer, but others are only designed for single player. With that, we're going to head back to the main menu and move on to the exhibition mode. Here, we can choose any character, and we can even select star characters or left-handed settings if we have star characters unlocked. Because we have quite a few unlockable characters that we didn't really see throughout the playthrough, I think we'll play as Fly Guy, and we're also, we're also going to choose Doubles Mode and have Paratroopa as our partner set to the Ace difficulty to also demonstrate that. For our opponents, we're going to have Wiggler and PD Piranha, and for the sake of time, I'm going to set them to the Intermediate difficulty. We have every court unlocked. Again, if you play an exhibition, match or a gimmick match on any court, you'll unlock the standard version of that court as well, but there are several other options that we'll go over in a bit. But to demonstrate, since we didn't see it, since this normally comes up in the doubles final for the um, Thunder Cup, we're going to try out the gimmick court for the Mario Classic court. We can change different rule sets including turning off power shots, changing the amount of sets, and even having six games per set instead of two. But I think we'll go with these settings. To tell the truth, I don't usually play as Fly Guy, so this will be interesting. That's part of the reason why I turned up the computer difficulty for Paratroopa to make things a little bit easier, because I'm also really bad at this court, to be honest. You have the little Koopas. They're actually not called Koopas in Mario Bros. Arcade. Um, well, I'll refer to them as Koopas because I actually don't remember the canon name. But they'll walk along the court along the crab enemies that I also don't remember the names of. I want to say the firefly enemies can also show up. I'm pretty sure also through data mining, people actually found 3D models of these enemies as well, so they weren't necessarily always intended to be sprites. There's Paratroopa's special there that causes a whirlwind effect, and there's PD's defense special that spawns one of the goop piranhas. In general, I love the aesthetic of the court again, but I just find the gimmick to be a little bit oppressive actually because of how much you have to keep track of, especially with this being the doubles final or the a doubles set setting in the Thunder Cup. And we're uh, taking the place of the Bowser court in 
that would normally come up in the single player version, or the singles version, of the Thunder Cup. But having two characters on the court, and having all the enemies running around, there's a lot to keep track of again, and again, I just find it a little bit overwhelming. It's also worth mentioning that the boundaries of the court have been expanded slightly for doubles, so instead of the the inside lines counting, or anything outside of the lines being out, means you can hit the ball to the outer edges of the court. I feel like I'm having a hard time explaining all this as I'm also trying not to lose, as I'm very easily losing track of my character, for example. And again, that's part of the reason why I set the AI difficulty relatively low for our opponents, because I knew we would have a tough time on this particular court. But that will head back over here and show off some other options. I think we'll stick with the unlockable characters, but this time we'll play as Paratroopa in singles against Fly Guy, set to intermediate, because I don't really feel like fighting an ace computer player with a character I'm not familiar with. But let's also try out the ring shot mode. Here we should have some options as well, including power shots again, and also the target score, but we'll leave it at 100. Final set, Paratropa to serve. In a lot of cases, the other modes are set to the standard court variation, which is nice that we don't have to worry about everything else on top of this mode. But the gimmick of the ring matches is, basically every time you win a point, you'll get all of the rings that you've collected, and you'll also gain half of your opponent's rings in your reserve. So for example, we'll take about half of his points for next time. So in general, these matches can actually go very quickly, as you can tell. And I'm pretty sure as the rings get larger, they're actually worth fewer points. So you want to hit the rings, or go uh, hit the ball through the rings when they're generally smaller, because then you'll actually get more points out of it. In general, I do enjoy this mode. This has been kind of a staple of the series. And in general, I do find it very fun as a nice diversion. And with that, we should have one more match type, so once again, let's mix things up and go with Wiggler and P. Piranha. Once again, set to intermediate, but we also have one more rule set that's very interesting, the item battle. We have quite a few rule sets to choose from as well that basically mirror the standard matches, so we'll leave everything to default. As you can tell, there's basically Mario Kart items around the court. Every time you get an item and then receive a ball, that item will automatically be used, so you don't have to worry about any additional controls or anything. But each gimmick court actually has slightly different chances of items popping up. So for example, the Mario Classic court there's a higher chance of stars coming up, which can definitely be very tricky to deal with as both players are invincible right now, so we really don't have any item effects in play. We also aren't, uh, we are, we're also immune to things like lightning or shells, so again, as you have a lot of stars here, it can definitely be kind of trivialized having um, everyone invincible here, but in general, it's a very interesting rule set. I did not expect to lob the ball that far, to be honest. Um, but again, it's fun as an alternate mode. I don't remember if any other Mario, Mario Tennis games really have a mode like that, actually. It's also worth mentioning that at the end of a set, or at the end of a game, the items will reset. So we had a star at the end of the previous one, and we lost it, which makes sense. So we don't get to carry that into the next round and immediately have a star. Um, but again, these are very interesting characters because we have two very like defensive characters. Uh, though PD is not a defensive character by archetype, I think Wiggler is. Uh, but in general, it's still difficult because PD has a fairly large hitbox. But again, the one benefit is obviously it's a lot less maneuverable than some of the lighter characters. And we have Wiggler's defensive special there, which is a nice call back to the the. Um, butterfly form, which I think might have a separate name, but again, I'm not really sure what it was. And with that, we've reached the match point of this, so that was a very easy final match point. 
to close out this quick look at the exhibition mode, though there's a couple more things I wanted to go over. Once more, let's head back over here. We'll just select two characters because we're not going to go through this. But I also wanted to quickly mention that the item battles have slightly different rule sets depending on the court. So for all the Peach Dome courts, you have standard item chances. For Luigi's Mansion, you have more a uh, higher frequency of getting lightning. For Delfino Plaza, you have more mushrooms and item boxes. For the uh, Wario Factory Court, you have double the amount of item boxes over the net. For the Goopa Blooper Court, you have more shells. For the DK Jungle Court, as you might guess, you have a lot more bananas. And for the Bowser Castle Court, you actually don't have an increased item chance, but it is the only gimmick court that actually retains its gimmick for the item battle mode. So even though the item boxes chances are unchanged, the course the court is constantly tilting. So again, it's very interesting how much variety they have been able to inject into all of the different courts. This isn't a huge selection of courts, but there are so many different modes and combinations of rule sets that definitely help to make this mode stand out. But that was a quick look at this mode. Next up, let's return to the main menu once more, and next we'll go over the records option. Here we can view a bunch of different stats. We have different stats per mode, so for example, there's nothing here, because actually there should be something here if we scroll down far enough. Basically, this will track all of the combinations of wins that you've had. I actually don't see the one we had, so maybe because this is not singles, like maybe this only counts for singles mode and not doubles. Um, but either way, we also have the standard list as well. You also have different icons depending on which difficulty you've won against. So for example, for a interme an intermediate CPU, you'll have a different icon than for an A CPU, so you can even track that level of minutia for your combinations of wins. So that's very helpful. Obviously, I don't recommend ever completing this game because this would take forever winning every possible combination across every possible mode. Um, but yeah, here's an example of actually tracking our one win there. Again, it looks like it only counts for the singles mode, unfortunately. But we also have the tournament records here. We can view singles or doubles. We can basically cycle through all the trophies and it'll show which characters uh, we've won these tournaments with, so we can very quickly see which characters um, that we would, for example, need to play through the Star Cup in order to unlock their star variant. There's also the doubles option as well, I actually have fewer of the trophies here because there aren't any unlocks tied to the doubles version of the star tournament, so I only went through the main six default cups and only as Yoshi to unlock everything. Um, but there's also the special games records. Here you can see your best times for artists on the court. You can see your score for the endless modes, if applicable. It doesn't list exact sto exact scores, sadly, for the other modes. Um, and you can see that I actually didn't win the higher difficulties of these two because, again, I've or these three because I've actually never been particularly good at those. But again, this is just a nice way to quickly see your uh, completion status. Finally, there's one more interesting detail. If on the title screen you hold Z when you press start, you will have a bonus option, Event Games. To my understanding, because I don't think I've ever actually played this, this is essentially the tiebreak mode for if both players, or both teams, or both players, have tied games at the end of a set. So in that case, you basically have to be the first to score 7 points. And then, in this case, you can actually choose, I'm pretty sure, between 3, 5, and 7 points, but this mode is only available in multiplayer for 2 or 4 players in doubles. So yeah, I've actually never really been able to try out this mode, unfortunately. Um, but again, that is a nice little easter egg of just holding Z. If I'm not mistaken, if you hold A and B together, when you press plus, I would assume, 
on the Wii version. You can also access the menu through there, but again, as someone who has never really played the Wii version, I can't really vouch for that, but again, there was a button combination to access it in that version as well. But with that, that was a quick playthrough of Mario Power Tennis. To be honest, this isn't a game I had played for a really long time, since probably about 10 to 15 years. So it was really nice to go through this game again. Again, I have a lot of nostalgia for this. This was my first Mario Tennis game, and I liked it a lot. And again, I'm pretty sure in terms of my original file, which I sadly lost because of a corrupted memory card, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I was actually trying to fill out the records, like getting every trophy with every character, and even filling out some of the exhibition mode records. But again, I definitely played this game a ton as a kid, so again, it was fun getting a, an opportunity to, to revisit this and see how it's held up. And honestly, it is a lot of fun. Again, I do think the Mario Tennis games in general are among my favorites, and I have so much nostalgia for this one, even though, again, I do think in its current state, for example, Mario Tennis Aces is also a pretty fun game. I will always have a soft spot for this game because of nostalgia. But with that being said, I think that about concludes this playthrough, so thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for something different.